Here's a whirlwind tour of auto turn in Revit. So in Revit, I'm in a Lake Flato project on the auto turn online tab. I click upload view. It takes the contents of that view and represents it in this cloud view. I'm gonna click on the command to select a vehicle type. Passenger vehicle typical sedan, click OK, and then the next thing that you'll do, panning and zooming is the same as in Revit, click to create a simulation path. So here's that vehicle. The first pick positions the vehicle, the second one adjusts the angle or the direction the vehicle will be going. So once I pick, I could start defining a path, but I can also just hit finish at any time. So after the first two picks, you can place a vehicle, which in this case might just be, uh, let's call it an obstacle. Here's a vehicle ready to turn out into traffic, but there'll be a, a westbound vehicle in the right lane that has the right of way. So we'll wanna make sure that they can pull out of traffic uh, easily and not have any problems. So I'm gonna to click to create another simulation path. We're gonna adjust it so it's heading westbound and it always goes forward by default so if you're not quite sure about which direction to pick you have a 50 50 chance and then you can hit um, undo in the dialog box on the right so if we accidentally pick the wrong point here and it's going way into that concrete column I can click undo and you only get one undo so if that doesn't work you'll just have to delete this and, and try it again. It's as you can see quite easy to draw the path and we'll show this car backing into a parking spot so we could keep going and going but as soon as we want to go backwards we click this little blue arrow behind the car and I'm backing up here about as good as I back up in real life so <laughs> you can see that that fits in the spot and of course this could be shifted down and, and, and that could end up working out quite well. The next thing we're going to do is place a profile of that vehicle, that current selected vehicle in here so that we can remember what the overall length was and the spacing between the axles. Um, the next thing we'll look at is an eastbound commercial truck backing into what might be a loading dock or just a garage for a company's delivery vehicles. So we're going to change the definition of the current vehicle. We have to pick the region each time. Commercial truck, and you can see there's a single rear axle, double rear axle. So there's a, lots of options to pick from. Now we're gonna simulate the path. First pick, just where we wanna be. Second pick has to do with the exact direction or angle the vehicle's going. And then you know, here it's turning into oncoming traffic. And then I'm going to click the rear icon to make this start backing up, but that doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to um, go forward a little bit more. So I had to click the red arrow to get it to go forward. And then I'll click the blue arrow to start going in reverse again. And then when we're done, we click finish. So we can see that truck fit in there quite well. We can see the rear view mirrors. Um, we can keep track of that. Those aren't in the green lines because obviously those can be folded in if needed in really tight situations. One last example and um, well, let me add the profile of that truck. I'm going to pick one more vehicle type. I'm 
US region, and then a transportation truck. So while this may not be specific to this project, and actually check out this first one, that's a pretty intense over the road truck with three trailers. Um, here's a fairly average looking semi truck in the US. So I'm going to click OK to select that. And then I'll pick this point here. Uh, let's see. I'll just have the vehicle going north in the right bound lane. Let me move that dialog out of the way. Interesting thing, of course, about a semi truck is is it um, it pivots, so it it makes quite a large turning radius. Unlike the unibody commercial truck that we had selected a minute ago. Get this out of the way. Notice in this dialog it also has the speed of the truck listed. So if we were to finish that and then try um, I'm going to quickly add the profile so we remember to do that. I always forget to do that. So I'm going to start a simulation one more time. And let's say this truck is going 15 miles an hour. that has an effect on the turning radius because a truck can only turn so much when it's going faster. So once we're done with all of this, the last simplest step of all is to click finish. All of this information is going to be transferred into the Revit view. So this is all view specific information. It's not 3D. So this is a separate Revit family called Simulation 1. And then the second simulation that we did is called Simulation number 2. And here's 3. Looks like our, our view is currently cropped. So I have to uncrop that if, if I want that to show up. And if we decided we didn't want these this, this extra semi truck going 15 miles an hour, I can delete it after I unpin it. And that's a quick look at auto turn. We just repeat that whole process if we need to add another simulation.